Are you ready to observe the eclipse? That's right, there is a total solar eclipse on April 8th, and you need to get ready now. I'm Dr. David Reitzel, and I'll be traveling to Belton, Texas with Griffith Observatory Foundation to host the trip we're taking there to observe the eclipse. In fact, we will have live coverage right here with Griffith Observatory to bring you totality from Belton, Texas. We want you to come along with us for this trip. Join us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and use the hashtag OBS Eclipse Watch 2024 with all your posts, and we might share you. Make sure you go to YouTube and follow that video right now. Go ahead and thumbs up it, and that way you won't miss our broadcast on the 8th. Now, how do you observe the eclipse? I'm here to tell you all about that. If you're in that narrow gray strip, that's called the path of totality, you will see a total solar eclipse. But if you're anywhere else in the nation, you will see a partial eclipse. A partial eclipse is what it looks like on the left-hand side, and a total solar eclipse is on the right-hand side. And by the way, let me tell you, if you're anywhere near that path of totality, make sure you get there, because the difference in a partial eclipse on the left and a total solar eclipse on the right is a little bit like being told about chocolate cake and eating that chocolate cake. It's that different. So what's going on in an eclipse? The moon is getting in between the sun and the earth, and it's casting its shadow upon the earth. The darkest part of the shadow is called the umbra. That's where the moon is completely covering the disk of the sun. That penumbra is dimmer. The sun is partially blocked, but not entirely. That, that shadow on the earth looks like a dark spot from space. And if you're in that dark spot again, you get to experience that total solar eclipse. However, most of the nation, about 90% of you, are not in this path of totality, and you will see a partial solar eclipse. This is a series of images taken throughout a path of, or at the time of a few hours. And as you can see, the moon slowly passes in front of the sun, but it never completely covers it. This is what you'll see if you're in, or if you are not in the path of totality. And if you're close to it, it will almost cover the sun. If you're far from it, it won't cover it very much at all. But it'll depend on where you are. Now, how can you safely view this? It is not safe to look with your eyes. You need to make sure you are prepared with the right equipment. So I'm gonna tell you about that. Now, if you're in the path of totality, you'll get to experience this. So totally different experience. When the totality happens, you see the sun's corona. It is spectacular. Now, do you need special equipment like this to see a solar eclipse? Well, your first hint is there are stars in this picture. These telescopes are set up to work at night. They're not even set up to observe the sun. You might be able to, but honestly, I would rather have something like this. That's right, a vegetable steamer. It has little holes in it, and as the sunlight passes through the holes, it'll make little images of the sun. This is a colander somebody is using. That works just as well, too. Um, and you can make little images of the sun. This is great for all you folks that are not in the path of totality. You can look at the sun and see how it's getting eclipsed just using household appliances, essentially. Well, not really appliances, but household gadgets. Now, I hope most of you have eclipse glasses. This is the way you can safely look at the sun directly. You cannot observe it directly otherwise. It's simply not safe sunglasses don't work, you need to make sure you have a pair of these you can put on and then you can safely get them. Now, if you're here in Los Angeles, you can come to our Stellar Emporium and pick up a pair. Um, or you might want to get a pair, a thing like this, a Solarama that you can use and look through the window. So you can get these sorts of things online, but make sure they're approved by the AAS, the American Astronomical Society, NASA, because there are fake ones out there and it can be dangerous. Another safe way to look at the eclipse is with a pinhole camera. Just like I was saying before, you can take sunlight falling through little holes and make an image of the sun. In this case, what's happening is you cut a hole in the cardboard and you mount a little piece of aluminum foil and you poke a hole in it. This lets the sunlight fall through it and make an image on the far side. You'll end up with a device that looks a little bit like this. I find them to be kind of clumsy. They're fun to make, fun to use, but you have to hold them at the right angle. So I prefer just to make something like this, a little slide holder, piece of aluminum foil, you poke a hole in it, and then you can project the sun onto any flat surface. You can see these people are using just their fingers, crisscrossing their fingers, and you're able to make little images of the sun. So you can do that. Now, you can also get clever. 
poke a little smiley face into that aluminum foil and it will make little smiley face sun images. It's great fun. Now, if you're observant, you'll notice that shadows everywhere are behaving strangely. The little dapples of sunlight falling through the leaves of a tree make little crescents on the ground. You never knew that. They're circles every day, but that's because the sun is a circle in the sky. When the moon is passing in front of it, these are all little images. Now you'll notice the shadows are actually sharper in the direction that the sun is smallest, the short direction of the eclipse. The long direction of the eclipse, the shadows will be blurrier. Now you might want to know, can I use my binoculars? I want to get an up close view of this. No, that's super, super dangerous unless you cover them with the right kind of filter. Now you need to use something like this, safety foil that's designed and made to be used with binoculars and telescopes. I recommend you contact a camera store or a telescope store, work with them directly to help you properly outfit your binoculars. Here you can see I set up my telescope. I put, covered most of the front of it completely, cut a small hole, and then that small hole is covered with that proper safety film. And I was able to get images close to this, able to see sunspots on the surface of the sun. So with a, a, a telescope in that partial phase outside of the path of totality, you really can see some spectacular things. These sunspots you're seeing here are bigger than the entire Earth in their magnetic storms that showed little darker, cooler areas of the sun. Now, what if you are in that path of totality or close to it? Well, there's a few things you need to do. Get to where you're going early. People will be driving. There will be a lot of traffic. This is a, you know, perhaps once in a lifetime event for some folks. If you missed it in 2017, you don't have another opportunity until 2024. So get where you're going. You don't want to be stuck in traffic. Instead, gather with people you like. This is me and my family. We had matching t-shirts and we were there early and we had time to put on our glasses and take a fun shot, you know, have, make the most of the day. Um, observe the sun, but make memories as well. Have an area you can spread out. Set up your telescopes, your camera gear, your lounge chairs, you want to be comfortable. Also, you're going to have a few hours. This is an event that lasts almost three hours, so you're going to want to have snacks and food and beverages, hats, sunscreen. You're going to want to be comfortable. Here I am observing through the telescope, getting the best look of it as the sun was dimming. Now, then I started to notice animals were behaving strangely. I heard some birds flying off. I didn't take this picture. This is just a picture of birds going to roost. But this could happen. In Austin, Texas, they're wondering if the bats will come out of the cave when it gets dark, when the sun gets eclipsed. Now, if you're in that path of totality, pay attention. All sorts of strange things can happen. And one of those is something called shadow bands. This happens moments before totality. And we're not sure why, but if you look at a flat piece of paper, a white sheet or something like that, you'll notice what looks like ripples passing across it. If you've ever seen the bottom of a swimming pool on a sunny day when there's waves in the top of the pool, you see the shadows moving down there, it looks a little bit like that. And we think something similar is happening in the Earth's atmosphere with the sun. Kind of neat to see, but very hard to photograph. This is one of the best photographs I could find. And frankly, it's not very good. So photographers, you get out there and get photos like this and maybe you can be famous. Now, one thing you can see with your eyes if you have the proper protection on is the diamond ring effect or Bailey's beads. The diamond ring effect is caused as the last bit of sun is passing through the mountains on the moon. So in between the mountains, the sunlight passes through a valley and can make this bright diamond ring effect. And then just at the last second before it disappears completely, as the light filters through several valleys, you can get a series of beads, and those are known as Bailey's beads. And when you see that, the next thing that happens is totality. And it looks like a dark hole appears in the middle of the sun. The ghostly corona appears in the sky, and you can take off your protection. For the next three and a half minutes, it is safe to look at the sun directly. You can observe it and enjoy. In fact, we expect to see a couple of bright objects flanking the sun, and that'll happen right about 1.39 p.m. Central Daylight Time in Belton. Those objects are Venus and Jupiter, and if the sky is clear enough, we expect to see Mars, Saturn, and the stars Capella and Rigel. There's even a comet up in the sky, probably too faint to see during the eclipse, but if you have the right equipment, people might be able to photograph it. Another thing to notice during totality is that the horizon will appear sort of bright in all directions. It's like the sunsets appearing around you rather than in one direction off to the west. You can see here, this is a photo from La Silla down in Chile, and the astronomers there were lucky to get an eclipse, and they were watching it from their telescopes. 
Now you might wonder, when it's in totality, can I use my binoculars? Yes, like I said, you can take off the filters off your eyes, you can take the filters off of your binoculars and telescopes, and you might see something like this. This is the ghostly corona around the sun, and it's about as bright as the full moon. And it's about a couple of sun diameters, so it's fairly big in the sky and easy to see. But if you magnify it with binoculars, you might see these structures that are caused by the magnetic field of the sun. In addition, we might see the chromosphere of the sun. That's the glowing red you're seeing there. Those are prominences on the sun, hydrogen gas that's been lifted up by magnetic fields, and it glows in this red color. So we may see that as well um, through some of these uh, telescopes and binoculars. Now, if you're lucky enough to be seeing the eclipse, you need to know when. I haven't talked about that at all, you've noticed. Well, a little bit. I mentioned the time where I am going to be, but it's different for everybody. In fact, if in Belton, Texas, this is what we have going on. It starts at about 1219. The eclipse begins, the first bite. The totality will begin at 137. It'll end 141. And then just before 3 p.m., 259, the eclipse finishes but it is different for all of you. So I recommend you check with NASA, check with the maps, or if you're like me, you can get an Eclipse Timer app. It'll tell you the time it starts, the time it ends, when the first contact. It's a great tool if you're gonna be doing photography and it uses your GPS location. So it's the most accurate way to do it. And there are several out there. Now, what if, what if it's cloudy? I hate to have to mention the, the cloud word, but the thing is, if you're experiencing an eclipse, it still happens whether it's under the whether it's beyond the clouds or not it'll get dark the animals might still go off to roost the birds will sounds may change the temperature will change the weather could change imagine having a thunderstorm happening off in the distance and it gets dark where you are and you see lightning so you're still having an experience of a lifetime and i recommend that just everybody stay positive enjoy the experience that's the best thing you can do on these trips is enjoy so I hope you're all ready to observe the eclipse and we want you to participate with us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn and use that hashtag OBS Eclipse Watch 2024 and we might share your experiences with all the people that enjoy Griffith Observatory. Thank you so much and happy eclipse watching.